Well guys, we got another project here. This is the one I in framed. I got a bad EGR valve on this thing. It's stuck sticking open and we had to change that. And it's got a bad engine oil pressure sensor too. Um the big project though is there's a sleeper sitting there for it. And the problem is that is not the sleeper that was originally mounted on this truck. He bought this truck at an auction. There was no sleeper. It was set up as a day cab at the, you know, the previous owners. And who knows where the sleeper's at anyway. So, as you can see here, we've got... Um, our cab. Hey, hang on. Let me answer the phone. Okay, let's put a choker on it. Should have done it in a basket, I'm gonna run out of winch. pull this cap off oh where do I sit this at I guess I'll just well um hmm Not really sure right now. I might move the truck tomorrow. I'll come out here tomorrow and pull this cap. Gotta do something with that. That's gonna go away basically. Oh man, guys, finally got this. I didn't even video this. This was so excruciatingly painful getting this cap off the back. I've been cleaning all the silicone and leftover fiberglass residue off of it. My gosh. I got it off though without breaking it because he we, he didn't want it broke because he sold it to his brother so man i'm telling you what that glue i don't know if it was yeah it's it's like polyurethane glue that they do the windows with i mean i've got one of those window cutters and i was jam i bet it took me four hours to get it off without breaking it just 
kind of going in there with a knife and cutting and scraping and pulling and sticking a screwdriver in there and wedging and putting a little tension on it and then cutting some more and oh man oh, no fun so here is our cab air ride this has to come off let's see i probably should go get a bottle jack i've got a short bottle jack before i pull the airline off and then the cab will stay up at that spot and then once i get the sleeper on oh man i'm trying to think this through a little bit yeah i could leave the bottle jack under there and then maybe put a block over here to hold the cab up so I'm going to have to pull it outside to put the cab on. And once I get the cab on, I'm going to have to pull it back off and then pull the saddle tanks off. Crane them off once I figure out where my holes are going to be for my cab suspension back here. So yeah, it's it's this is a labor-intensive process, trust me. And plus, he's coming with the... Kenworth had, Kenworth had the exhaust back pressure valve because they're a Cummins dealer too. So, but his engine oil pressure sensor was throwing the code for that too. This truck has had so many problems, man. Okay, let's pull the supply line off. If we can get her off. the bag and that should lower that down onto the box it's tight on this one it's just a little bit different there so all right let's plug this one back in So I gotta, how is this all scabbed together here? A bunch of climbing into the top and uncomfortable positions. That's what it's all about there. Is metric or the SAE? What the hell are they? They almost look like 9 sixteenths is what they look like. 9 sixteenths or 5 eighths. Uh, all right, and then there's one, two, three, four, four half inch bolts in the bottom. All right, those won't be too bad to get to. Uh, let me go get some wrenches. Oh man, Let's get all the bolts out of it. You can't even see it right now, and I'm going to show it to you here in a second. One bolt up there. Huh. Not too much fun. This bolt right here. Holy cow. Wasn't too much fun. We got her though. Alright. Look at all the red. Yeah, this guy was hauling chips out of the woods before this. Now he's gonna go on the highway, he says. We call it highway trucking. Better him than me. Well guys, we're in the process of dropping the saddle tanks or moving them out of the way. And they're clear full of fuel. How many gallons? Total flow capacity 163. Minimal, min usable capacity 150. Basically 150 gallon tanks. So. Clear full, trying to figure out, yeah, six, about six pounds a gallon of diesel fuel, I think, huh? Yeah. Yeah, they're not too heavy.
stuck to there, I guess, I don't know. That ain't really gonna stay there now. Thought I had it balanced and kind of centered a little better than that. Put that. You just don't seem to care about too much of anything. Let's go get in the cab, little guy. Go lay, go lay right here. Let me turn the air conditioner on for you. There you go. Lay down.
something to set this on. You now I got a hold of the sleeper and get it suspended, get it strapped. I just noticed something though. And there's two holes. That's right where it goes. They, uh, why didn't they mount that? I'm gonna mount that. Let me mount this, and we'll crane the sleeper on there. All right. So we got this bolted in and secured. I want to get this block out of here. I think I'll. I want to get my bottle jack in there. I just don't want to have a problem and not have to be able to get the block out. Uh, I'm gonna use this port of power that one of my subscribers, Chet Ragsdale. Awesome awesome gift why are you always laying right where you shouldn't be little guy flop the lid over and whack you in the head i really gotta watch out for you kid one of the one of the commenters got on there uh that's a while back but me and this guy went back and forth quite a while and uh but he said a real field mechanic doesn't babysit dogs. So if you have a dog, I've got probably one of the best John Deere mechanics I've ever known. I, I told him that the other day. I told Pete, I said, hey, you got Rufus with you? And that's his dog. And, and he goes, yeah. I said, well, you're not a real mechanic. You're not a real field mechanic. I said, who's the stupid son bet you said that? That's what Pete says. He goes, I don't know how you put up with that YouTube shit. He said, I'd kill half them fuckers. I'd be wanting to go find them and hunt them down. <laughs> I said, yeah, there's some real geniuses. Make some real genius comments, I'll tell you that. Come on, get out of there. Let's set that there so I don't lose it. Put it back in the kit over there. Nice little port of power. I used it the other day to... Oh, I changed the springs on that uh, feed truck. And I used it to uh, shove the axle to, you know, to get the center pin, uh, the pin on the bottom of the spring to, to fall into the... Uh, notch there in the axle let's see what do we need we need this double mail need that maybe look, this foot here will work ah right, let's use this foot here and then let's go like that we'll put it right up under this ear right here okay this foot for a support on the bottom. I'm gonna need more early. Uh, ow! That hurt. Probably the center section is what I'm thinking. Uh, yeah, that's probably gonna be about right. Why is that not going on there? We don't, I mean, these, we don't have to go very high to get our jack in there. Where is that other foot that I had? Actually, I think I will use that other one. There she goes. Let's get this block of wood out. Well, let's get the jack. 
and then pull the block board out. Yes, more better. Block out. Okay. Handy little rig right there now. Okay, let's. Yep, that's a handy little rig. I'm just going to set it over here. I'm probably going to be using it again. Put it up, yeah. Knowing my luck, I, it'll set there bake in the sun. I'm gonna put it up. Okay. Fifth wheel over there. This is where two people would be kind of handy. Another set of eyes on the other side. It is what it is, as they say. Still need to come. side and then we got to get that boot where it kind of goes in where it's supposed to be okay we're pretty close here might be I haven't figured out I've never had to do this to one so I don't really know this is kind of new territory you know I got to get it to where it's level and everything too so that's where I'm probably gonna be using that porta power again to get everything leveled out to get my cab mounts stuff on the back here situated where it needs to go um, Uh, the 
tanks aren't going to be very fun. I'll probably pull the sleeper back off and then put the tanks back on it. Probably what I'm going to wind up doing. It's a lot easier to put them tanks on there with the sleeper off of it. Let's get the sleeper mocked up first to where it's supposed to be. Well guys, I don't know what, look at this airbag, if you take this bolt out of this airbag, the, the stroke is all, the stroke on this shock absorber is almost all the way out. It's almost like this spacer down here, this came off a different frame or something, he must have got these out of a junkyard. I'm, not, I'm thinking the spacer needs to go away, is that part of the bag or screws on, it's probably screws onto the bottom of the bag I'm guessing. As I look, the bag is the same part number as the one on the other side. And I don't know, man. Um, this one here is not even reaching, really, I guess. Or is that the one that's supposed to be over there? And I don't know what the hell's going on here. I really don't. To me, it's almost like that one's wrong because by the time, you, it seems like to me you would want your cab setting about halfway in the stroke, you know. And I'm I'm about all the way up, which I think once this bag geared up, it'll it'll push up a ways. This one seems more right to me than that one does over there. To me, that one there is so collapsed with the bag or with the, uh, you know, the stroke of the shock absorber all the way out by the time this thing even airs up shit it comes up to like here i mean it's way too tall hey pine beetle hey buddy um yeah i'm almost thinking this spacer's got to come out of there is what the deal is but first let's get it mounted once we get it mounted here then we can figure that out we can figure out what the stroke is and the length of the stroke on our shock absorbers and then meet about halfway and then figure out where we're going to be at. All right, guys. This mag drill. I ordered a new knockout little Oscar. You always like laying in about the most bizarre spots. somewhere it ain't gonna go anywhere but right there obviously <sighs> maybe it'll stay right there it'll pop loose and in the head but uh there's supposed to be a strap that goes around this too in case you lose power and uh i usually don't use it because usually i'm standing there and i got my knee under it Right now, I would actually like to use it, but I just realized that when that guy borrowed it, that didn't come back with it either. And I ordered that, and it's sitting up there, and I haven't, I keep leaving before those guys open in the morning, and haven't, haven't been by there to get it. Okay, we got company or what? Oh, yeah. Okay, here we go. Make sure your green light is on. Now this thing here will kind of try to walk on you sometimes too.
Okay, that's one hole. Now turn the magnet off. All right, clean some of the shavings off. Yeah, that usually when you pull it back, there's a spring in here and that plunger and it knocks that out when you pull that handle up. But if it no longer exists and it's not here, so ain't much a guy can do about it. So pull it out with a pair of pliers. Kind of pain in the ass. There's probably about one guy, one guy that I'll let borrow anything. I borrow stuff from him too, and I try to take it back from the condition in which it was, you know, received. one hole down. I looked in there and I didn't see any interference with the harness or anything, so we should be good to go there. Right. They're kind of heavy, you know. You don't hold them up there very long. How we looking here? Is our green light on? The green light ain't on, don't start drawing. I think I need to come that way just a touch. Right there. Looks pretty damn good right there. There's a little bit of forgiveness. This isn't a 5 8 bit. What is this? This is an 11 16 bit. So you got a little bit of room for error. And that should really get on the nerves of some of all of the perfectionists out there. So, I don't know what the hell's going on here. Oh, I see him right beside that hanger, which is okay, but <sighs> I'm right beside it. Might have to put the bolt in this way or something. Might have to just grind it off, knock it off of there. We will see. I see why it's not going all the way through. Let's go on and go in again. <laughs> Alright. That wiener dog, he just don't really care about much. You know, nothing bothers him too much. Okay, now I gotta kinda hang it upside down now. And drill this hole. Oh, my 
cords messing with me here. I gotta go do a forced regen on a 6190R. And there's a New Holland bell wagon across the road that I guess won't start. Said they've been working on it for two days and can't get it to run. I don't know what the hell. Green lights on. Sometimes you'll get some metal shavings in between there and that'll really screw you up. It won't stay on there hardly. It will make life very inconvenient for you. I just thought about this. I guess, yeah, there should still be plenty of room here, I would think, with that. With that on there, that it's not going to interfere with the tank. It, it's above the plane of the tank. Yeah, this is above the plane of the tank. So we should be fine. Okay. I was getting a little worried there. I thought, oh shit. We're going to have to get shorter tanks or something. Do something different. No, I, I think we're going to be just fine. That'll sit in here and it'll stick out in here, you know. But it shouldn't interfere with the tank. <sighs> okay. There we go. I don't like this upside down shit. Slug out of there and get that wiped down. I'll have to pull these other mounts off that was on the original sleeper and uh, blank the holes with some bolts. drill in the shade over here by Oscar. I know I gotta bend over to pick it up but it's better than putting it on the bumper and then getting a hold of it and not being able to grab it. I love that drill. Used to do those the old-fashioned way. Man my god we used to do frame inserts on log trucks. A lot of the old older Peterbilts. I think it's I can't remember if the Kenworths did that too. I remember some Peterbilts had aluminum frame rails log trucks. And we would, they'd break the frames on them. And we would weld the frame back together and then put a piece of channel insert all the way the length of the frame to reinforce it. And put, I mean, anywhere you could get a bolt, pretty much. You know, shit. God, that was a lot of work. Doing them by hand with a hand, with an air drill. And then they came out with these and oh my God. You talk about a difference now. Holy cow. I'll tell you what, when I was... That, that's that's a young man's game right there. Drilling holes by hand all day long. I think it'd kill me now, but... Alrighty. I gotta go find some bolts. I bought a bunch of 5 8 bolts. Ah, oh, wait a second. I bought a bunch because this Peterbilt I'm doing in here... I hate doing that, you know, them guys, I, they're good customers, but they'll, they'll do that, they'll, they'll, their mechanics will work on it for three or four days, and I'm not, they'll probably watch this too, and that's okay, but I'll tell you what, sometimes they'll screw up more stuff, and you're chasing them, trying to figure out what in the hell they did, when it was some simple problem, I just, 
Now, I don't really like doing that, going over there and chasing them. I guess you can charge them, but how thick do we need this, Oscar? How thick a bolt do we need? I think we need, especially up here, yeah, we need a pretty thick bolt up here. I got some longer ones here somewhere. Bought a whole bunch of them. I bought some longer ones. I gotta go find them. Let me go find them. Well, guys, got everything mounted here. Um, now I gotta pull the sleeper back off. This is gonna be easier to mount the fuel tanks with the crane. It doesn't take much to pull it off. So I still got the strap rigged up to it. I went over to the bell wagon that they couldn't get started new holland uh, bw28 i guess they've been working on it for two days and the fuel shut off solenoid fuse five amp fuse was blown oh uh, really you guys been messing with that for two days really um anyway went over there and changed the fuse and fired it up look out bud you got to get in up where i can get in here and uh, started looking at the wire because, you know, well, why'd the fuse blow? And and found a bare spot on the wire where it was rubbing on the frame and fixed the wire and said, there you go. Took me about five minutes. Anyways, uh, I'll be back Monday. It's Saturday evening. I got to run up the doors, and I think I might video this on the 6190R Don Deere. And uh, it sounds like it needs a force regen, so... I'm gonna run up there and I'll be back Monday and see if I can't resolve this thing and just kind of unbolt that sleeper and swing it off there, throw the fuel tanks back on it, swing the sleeper back on it and bolt it all back in there and then then I gotta plumb the air suspension for the sleeper and you know run the air line. It's gonna need a longer line now to go back there because they cut the line and made it shorter to reach the cab suspension so. Anyways, that's it.